Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about host laws and Canada. And I don't think anybody actually understands this. But first of all, Canada is a construction of colonialism. This isn't Europe, it isn't Africa, it isn't China, it's indigenous Turtle Island. And still, the law that we have is the law that we still believe applies. And I want to tell you a little bit about the history of white men in this country, and particularly white British men. When they came here, they were met with post laws. And our law says, quite simply, everybody eats potatoes. Secondly, every woman is entitled to a house. Everybody eats, and every woman is entitled to a house. So when they said, can we, you know, build something from there? Sure, go ahead. The third one is that everybody has access, the unlimited wealth of the land. Well, lots of things happened after that. I mean, we had lots of epidemics, and plenty of us died, and there was so many Englishmen coming over, you know, by, I think it was 1763, that we were overwhelmed, and they began to pass laws against us against us. Not just me, but future Africans, future Asians, future Latin Americans, Gales, Celts, Italian, everybody, basically. And so these guys got a head start. Harper's one of them, he had a head start. And uh, they continue to struggle to hold their place. That's what this is all about. It's a struggle to hold the place of the privilege of white Anglo-Saxon men. That's what this is about. And when we oppose that, um, in order for it to be a political struggle, we have to have a counter law. And you have a counter law. It's my law. It's the post law of indigenous people. Everybody eats, every woman has a right to a house, and everyone has access to the wealth of the land. And there is no question of privilege, first in line, first in time, all of that stuff is imported by the British colonizers that eventually uh, achieved preponderance and still have preponderance. But I want you to consider that extremely seriously when you object. There are no immigrants in our, in our language. There's no such thing as an immigrant. You're either a visitor or you're a citizen. If you're just visiting, be a good guest. You come here and you're returning home. But if you plan to stay here, sink root here, and find out what the original laws are about, and live within those laws. In order to wage a political struggle, I think we need to consider that sovereignty for indigenous people is at the bottom of it. And I'm not saying that as a privilege. I'm saying that as you respect and honor indigenous sovereignty, you also take on the law and the legal framework of people here. And it's really quite simple. Everybody eats, every woman has a right to a house, and everyone has access to the wealth. There's a caveat on that. And I think this is where the capitalism comes in. <laughs> the caveat is, take only what you need. Take only what you need. We need to consider that. And so there's no place for capitalism in this country. There is no place for capitalism in this country. We're all here entitled to conjure up a living from the land. 
We're all here to conjure up a living with each other, in connection with each other. We are not here to rape any body, whether it's a tree, the water, the uranium, the gold, whatever it is that these people have planned for us. That's not what we're about. We're about eking out a space for ourselves, a comfortable life for ourselves, and accessing the wealth of the land. So then if you think of immigrant, which means somebody that's not from here, which is really everybody but average people. I don't know if Harper thinks about that much, but he's still an immigrant in my mind. If you think about that, you'll think about how the law works. He's not entitled to say to you, you don't have a right to be here as a visitor or as a person coming from somewhere else. This land is huge. This land has untold wealth. Much of it, Harper calls, crown land. The Queen's hat doesn't need that much land. <laughs> Simple as that. And we didn't agree to give the Queen's hat all that land. And I'm sure you didn't either. Nobody was asked. It was these privileged men that came here first and established this for everybody else. And you know, they've established the most rigorous rules for people of color. Yeah. Beginning way back in the 60s and 70s, when they were forced to open the doors and at least give uh, some appearance of non-racist behavior. So they made a whole bunch of rules. And they particularly made those rules against women of color. These are not our rules. They have nothing to do with indigenous people. And that's why the native youth of British Columbia are linked to no one is illegal. No one is illegal. No one's a bastard child. No one's an illegal alien. Well, maybe if they came, oh no, I fell from the sky, so I am from another planet. What the hell? No, no one is illegal. Simple as that. No one is illegal. And we have to get that very clear in our minds and in our hearts and in our bodies and move with it. And we have to move with it with energy. We have to move with it with commitment. And we have to show that this land, this land of all the lands in the world, has no word for exclusion. It has no word to dismiss a woman from having a home. There should not be homeless, and we're, we persecute them, or Canada, I should say. I don't, but Canada persecutes them. And there is no such thing in the host laws of the indigenous people of this continent. So, if you support indigenous sovereignty, you're also supporting no one is illegal. There is no disconnect from those two things. The last thing I want to say, and it's, it just pisses me off to no end, but one of the things that, um, that they're saying is that if you're a woman that's abused by your partner or somewhere else, you can't come here and claim political asylum. I think that's the word, isn't it? Refugee status. Mm -hmm. And of course, the law here maintains that women are the nucleus. Women are the center. Women are in charge of the community. So of course, there is no abuse of women that's tolerable. There is no abuse of women that's tolerable, and we need to struggle with that. We need to commit to that. We need to commit to it in a way we've never committed to anything before. It is so easy to say, just another woman of color. What's that guy that's running for office that got mad because they put uh, Michael Jean in, as governor general and says, have we run out of the women of color? 
<laughs> it was, and he's running again. He's running again. And that's the government that we have now. They're totally hateful, hateful toward women of color and people of color. I should say women and men. Eh? They are people, right? <laughs> <Okay>. Sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Sometimes I guess. <laughs> we need to look at the bigger picture in the world. This world is created not by us. It was created outside of us. It was created by a very small number of very rapacious, predatory, well, I guess they're dysfunctional too, right? But anyway, <laughs> nasty people, and they're still in charge. They're still killing people. They're still making war. And we need to object. Thank you very much. I've got 30 seconds left. Thank you. It's an honor. <laughs>